let's talk a little bit about geographic marks, which are kind of similar to the to deceptive marks, but they are you know specifically about geographic representations. And so section 2E2 of the Lanham Act says primarily geographically descriptive marks cannot be registered. You can get registration with secondary meaning, and then we have a special provision for indicators of regional origin that can be registered under Section 4 as a certification or a collective mark. Section 2E3 says a primarily geographically deceptively misdescriptive mark cannot be registered. Secondary meaning is irrelevant in that case. And so the PTO's test for geographic descriptiveness Number one, the primary significance of the mark is geographic. Number two, the purchaser would be likely to make a goods place association. Number three, the mark in fact does identify the origin of the goods and services. And so again, if you have a geographically descriptive mark, secondary meaning is required. And so why is a goods place association important? For the same reason in the context of deceptive marks that it's important that consumers actually perceive that the mark is describing the goods and services. Because in a situation where consumers don't make a goods place association with a geographic term, that means we have an arbitrary or perhaps a suggestive mark. So take something like Amazon.com. Consumers don't make a goods place association with the term, and therefore it's perfectly valid as, a, as, as an arbitrary mark. So you can imagine you know, some, some play at the edges there. So take something like Nantucket Nectars. Is there going to be a goods place association there? Is it perhaps a suggestive mark? And so you, know, you, you can get into interesting questions about whether that, that step in the test is necessarily met. What about something like a Swiss army knife? Is that a geographically descriptive term? And so that the case involving Swiss army knife shows how a geographic mark may not be primarily geographically descriptive. And so what are the two possibilities when we're talking about, you know, when we're parsing the term Swiss army knife? Is it a Swiss army knife? that is an army knife that comes from Switzerland? Or alternatively, is it a Swiss army knife, a kind of knife that is associated with the Swiss army? And in a case that raised the specific question, the Second Circuit said the term Swiss army knife is not geographically descriptive. As used in the phrase Swiss army knife, Swiss is read more naturally to modify army rather than knife. And so the phrase Swiss army knife therefore describes a knife of the type associated with a Swiss army rather than a military knife manufactured in Switzerland. And so we have this question about whether or not geographically descriptive marks ought to be registered. Um, what about misdescriptive marks and are they competitively valuable? And so recall our discussion of geographical indications. Who ought to get to use Parmesan for cheese or Parmigiano Reggiano and associations with the Parma region of Italy. Then we get to geographically deceptively misdescriptive marks, situations in which consumers make the goods place association and the product in question does not in fact come from that geographic region. And under the statute, a, a geographically deceptively misdescriptive mark cannot be registered regardless of the existence of secondary meaning. And I have a long rant that I could go off on this, but I'm going to spare you. Not, I am going to note, however, that the Federal Circuit, in complete defiance of the statutory text and common sense, says that for a mark to be deemed geographically deceptively misdescriptive, there has to be materiality. And therefore, it is a additional burden on the part of the PTO if they seek to bar the registration of a geographically deceptively misdescriptive mark. And so to see an example of this principle in action, let's you show, show an example, um, think about an attempted registration for a trademark in Cuba Cuba cigars. And what is the potential barrier? The TTAB says no under section 2E3, saying that there is going to be an association with the country of Cuba. 
And the applicant argued, however, that, that Cuba Cuba would be primarily viewed as a non-geographic term with a meaning associated with the overall look and feel of the art and culture of the African Cuba kingdom. And the, you know, the, 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 the TTAB says, look, we have to consider the mark in context, and it is going to evoke Cuba, which is known for cigars, in the, in the context of the marketplace. And the applicant in turn says, well, we're not going to have deception because there is an embargo, and the existence of the trading embargo with Cuba is going to prevent deception. And the board says, no, consumers are still going to perceive the term as asserting a geographic meaning. And the strong and heightened goods place association is sufficient to support a finding of materiality. One could infer from evidence showing that Cuba is famous for cigars that a substantial portion of relevant consumers would in fact be deceived. 